Hi everybody, my name is Shannon. Welcome to my channel, Another Yarn. Thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. Well, if this is your first time, thank you for taking a chance on yet another, another yarn, another podcast. Uh, yeah, I love yarn, right? Can you tell? Of course. And I love knitting and I made my top. I love knitting. I love crocheting. I love um, making patterns, uh, you know, coming up with my own things. Uh, working on all sorts of stuff, dreaming about patterns, designing, you know, all the stuff, right? If it's yarn related, I am there. Today is Monday. And what I like to do, I dropped a square. What I like to do on Monday is go over all the things that I've made throughout the week and uh, see, you know, um, to get anything accomplished and have fun with it and just kind of take stock and really be happy with the little things in life, right? Whether you get a lot done in a week or just one stitch, it's okay. One stitch counts. So let's see, did I get anything done this week? Yes. Yes, I did. I am absolutely thrilled. For those that have been around here for a while, you already know that for me and my family, I do socks for Christmas. Well, you can't wait until November to start your socks. No, no, that's that's a bad time to start that, right? You need to start those sooner. So I start June, July time period, and uh, I try to get all my socks done. I give away at least 10 pair a year and sometimes more because sometimes when it comes towards the holidays, I get very, very generous, generous with my time, generous with my crafts, uh, generous with all of that stuff. It's just how I am. And a lot of times I'll end up giving away socks for Christmas and birthday, which means I have to have them already ready and done. And my family's birthdays tend to be November, December, January, mine's the outlier in August, right? So, you know, that's how that works. And uh, I'm on my way. So I have, I finished a pair of socks. Yes, I did. I finished the pink ones. These are monkey socks. You're like, they don't look like monkey socks. That's the name of the pattern. The pattern is designed by Cookie A. It is a free pattern on Nitty.com. Interweave also has it for free. And on Ravelry, you can link to the patterns and the different sources where you can get it for free. If you want expanded sizes, she does have a paid for version where you can get larger and smaller sizes of the pattern. But if you want it just like this, you can get it for free. So finish this. I know I've got a lot of ends to weave in, right? I know. But my thumb is just peeling right now. And uh, doing all the ends, whoo, that's a bit much. I know I just, I finished another project, product, project, and I did all the ends. And I'm paying for it. That's a good way to put it. It is, I'm not giving it a chance to heal. It's just dry. It's, it's dry and, and I'm constantly touching wool yarn and everything else and not keeping enough moisture on it because, you know, these are wool, right? These are a wool one. All the stuff that I'm working with, well, that just really saps the moisture and it's, it's just peeling and it's like the um, little skin tags kind of like and it flakes and it picks like oh, Velcro skin. Yeah, that's the way I've, I heard it termed. So I have these done and I have finished of my green ones. I mean, these are the same pattern, the monkey sock, and the yarn is, the, the main color of this is Heritage Print, and uh, let me see if I've got one right here. Yeah, I do. It's this stuff, right? I've got a pair of socks working on these too. It is this Cascade Heritage Print, and it is a number one, a super fine, 437 yards for 100 grams. This is a 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, machine wash cool, tumble dry, Cascade yarns in Seattle, Washington. I love this yarn. Um, I'm not affiliated. I'm, I don't. I don't get any money for any of the stuff. I'm just telling you what I use and what I like. Uh, that's what these are. The toes and cuffs are not, but the colored yarn is, and I'm really enjoying it. It's it's been a lot of fun. So this two pair with that. Um, I've got uh, the other pair that I have finished through the year. Uh, that's the mystery yarn I got at a thrift store. Yeah, two dollars, right? Two dollars. A dollar for a partial skein of that gray, and a dollar for that partial skein of the yellow. I can feel it definitely has wool content in it. Whether it has a wool nylon or 100%, that I don't know. But um, I love the colors, and 
These are from my oldest son. They're size 13. They're the big feet. And uh, these, um, I don't know. I'm not sure which family member will get those. They get to pick out their stuff. And then I was also working on another sock. I love this. So this right here, the toes is opal, the opal solids, opal sock yarn. It's a good hard wearing German sock yarn. This is again, another one of that heritage cascade heritage yarns. And I really enjoy this yarn because each stripe, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, if, if you, if you can find some of the YouTube uh, videos where it shows how they make the yarn, it is amazing. But it is um, dyed to where each stripe is the same length. You know, you've got the same um, amount of uh, space in between each. So I'm going to get the same rows for each stripe. I've got the same stuff. So then I, I've got a pretty good chance that sock number two will match this. And that'll be kind of neat. Is these other ones uh, with the nature of the yarn and everything, the way that goes through, they're not really meant to be matchy match, right? They're, they're fraternal. They're the same colors and stuff, but they're not. I mean, I could have... I mean, you can see with here, I could have because the stripes do definitely match up, but I wasn't worried about it. So these I left, just let them do their own thing and they don't match up 100%. Uh, I think these are pretty close. They're not 100% match, but look at that. Those are pretty close on the match uh, for that. So that's pretty cool. So I do like that about the yarn. If you're, if you have to have the match, you can, that's nice. So I've got that done. So three pair done. And then this one, I don't have its mate done. I'll get it. I'll get it. I won't, I won't let it die. I won't, it, it won't be second sock syndrome. I'll get it. I will. I promise it'll happen. So one more done. And then I was out and about and I had different yarn on me. So I'm like, oh yeah, I started another pair of socks. You're like, why did you start one and you didn't finish the other? Because I need variety. That's why. It keeps me motivated. It keeps me going. <laughs> so I started another pair and it's this yarn that I was just showing you. This one right here. What is the color on this? Does it say color number 122? I don't, so not, not to a Oh, come on. I'm stuck. So here is this sock as far as I've gotten. I am ready to start the heel on this. I've got that gorgeous orange. I like that orange. We know I like the orange. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put this blue as the heels and then finish out the sock and then do the same with the orange for the toe. I think that's going to be absolutely amazing. And I cast on 68 stitches for this one, which I'm hoping won't mess me up. I normally do a 64 or a 72 for my cast on and I have 70 rows from here to here, 70, 70. I have a 15 row cuff. That's a two by two, which means knit two, purl two. That's what that is. So I have 15 rows here. I normally do my cuffs in groups of five because then that way it helps me to remember what I'm doing. It's like, oh yeah, that's definitely more than 10. So it's gotta be 15, right? You know, that, that type of thing. It helps me to count. Cause if you're doing it like 11, 12, 13, you know, like how many do I have? Do I have it matching the other one? Did I remember? So that's just my way of doing it. And I do have 70 here. Then I'm gonna do the uh, heel and everything and we'll see how big I make this one. But uh, my oldest son also expressed an interest in this. He's like, ooh, what size are those? I'm like, why, why is that? He's like, well, I like those. I like that color. I've already got his done, but that doesn't mean I can't give him a pair for Christmas or, or for his birthday. It could be either, right? It could be all. So there we go. I am well on my way with my socks. So what is that? Uh, three and a half pair done. And then this one I've got, you know, that's not quite to the halfway point on this sock, but it's, you know, that's a good chunk. That's a really good chunk. And so far this year, I've done good making one sock and then the next sock. Last year, I really had to do them two at a time. It's, it's with my double points anyway. I don't do them on the circulars. You can, but I like my double points. And I was doing two at a time. And then what I would do is from the same ball, uh, one would go one direction with the colors and the other would go with the other direction. So I would work on the outside of the ball and the inside of the ball. They were guaranteed to be fraternal twins, same color, but opposite directions with the colors. Um, so far this year, I've done good making them one at a time. The first pair I did two at a time and these next few, I've just worn one at a time and 
I'm, I'm, I'm producing socks. I'm doing socks. So that's exciting. I'm getting them done. Uh, yeah. So, um, hopefully we can get all the socks taken care of. Uh, my husband was talking to his mom, my mother-in-law. She's a great lady. He was talking to her the other day and she's like, Oh, what's Shannon doing? She's like, oh, she's sitting here working on some stuff, knitting some socks and everything. She's like, Oh wait, I want my pair. I claim a pair. So, I mean, it's, it's not just my kids and their spouses and my husband, my mother-in-law also. So, you know, it, it, yeah, they just, uh, they, they just, they get given away. They just do. They are the most prized gift in my family. They really are. You know, I mean, you can buy things, you can do whatever, but this is the thing that everyone likes the most is the handmade socks. And all the adults seem to have a drawer full of them because they've collected them throughout the years and they continue to wear them. And it's funny, around the September time period, when they come and visit, they're all wearing socks. I mean, well, yeah, okay, but they're all wearing handmade socks. And they make it a point that I see that they're making handmade socks because they're smart and they know if they ooh and ah in the proper tone and the best manner, they're more likely to get more, which is probably why they've gotten them for birthdays, not just Christmas, you know, because there's the tone, there's the appreciation factor. Um, as we call it, some people are not crochet worthy, some people are not knit worthy. And what that means is they don't understand and appreciate all the time and energy and love that goes into the gift. So they're better off getting a Walmart gift card or a wherever gift card. It's not an insult, but that's less stress and trauma on the maker. Yes, yes it is. And it's less stress and trauma on them because they just don't know. They just don't understand. So if you ever find yourself in that situation where you've worked your heart out and you've given somebody something and they didn't appreciate it, just know that next time they get a gift card and you take your time and energy to someplace else. They're not trying to insult you. They're not trying to hurt your feelings. They really do not know. And they don't understand everything that you did and how much more meaning that handmade gift was than that gift card. But that's okay. You just give them a gift card and you concentrate your energies for the people who are knit worthy and crochet worthy and you'll find out who they are and that's where you put all your energies. So there's no problems with that, right? So that that's how that works out. Uh, did I finish anything else this week? Yes, yes I did. Did I wanna finish this thing? No, no I did not. <laughs> I know this sounds terrible. Where'd the book go? Okay, so we have seen, and, and it's nothing against it. I just, I was wanting to work on other things, right? You know, mindful stuff, something that I just wanted to work on. And this one, I just didn't want to. But my granddaughter's over today and she said, Nana, where's that thing that we were working on? And you said something. Yeah, I knew what she was talking about. Oh yeah, in this book, right? Um, I had the body of one of these things done. And, and it's not hard. It's not hard, right? It's crochet. It's not hard. So I had the body done and I had all of the eyes crocheted up. I got all the pieces and then it was just sewing it together. Remember I mentioned this with my thumb? Yeah, I sewed it together. Does my thumb hurt? Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> she hasn't seen it yet, but I did finish the little puppy dog. Isn't that adorable? I'm not gonna lie, it is the cutest thing. I am so thrilled with the pink sparkle that was added for the eyes. That just really sets it off for me. It gives me like the Paw Patrol vibe, but I'm not sure if that's the right animal, the right one. Um, she'll say something when she sees it, I'm sure she will. But I am thrilled that it is done. It, it Again, it's single crochet, it's not hard. I was just working on other things and I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to do my Monday video and I'm going to just tell you about all the things and I'm going to show you all the pieces that I have done. I had everything done. Well, no, I didn't have the eyes done. Right. And, uh, I just, I didn't want to sew it together. I got it. It's, it's beautiful. It really, really is. So every pattern in here has the same body. Okay. Okay, here's the little puppy dog that I did, right? Here's the little puppy dog. It looks just like it. Look at that, right? I mean, come on, that is adorable. So really thrilled with that, but each one has the same body. So once you make that shape, you can see it right there, that shape, 
you can put it as any particular animal and you just pick it out by color and then um, add the extra things like different ears and the eyes are all the same too. Each one has the same exact eye. And look at that, I had sparkle yarn. Each one does use a sparkle yarn as the iris. If you have it, I actually had some, so that was cool. What is this stuff? Uh, this is a Feza Night in a nice pink. So, I mean, hey, that's perfect. You're just using a tiny, tiny bit. Love it. So there you go. Um, and what a difference that makes for it. So each one, the eyes are the exact same, the body's the exact same. And then you're just making, you know, I mean, these, these little legs and arms, it's, they're all four the same. It's not different for each. So just they're tiny, right? You got two rounds of the brown and then four rounds, I think it is, of the other color. Easy. The ears take a little bit longer, right? Just because, well, they're bigger, but not all of them have the big ears. And then, of course, on this one, too, if you sewed those ears on differently, it'd be the bunny. Pretty sure, and I haven't looked, pretty sure the directions would be the same for the, this particular ear. Um, and then just sew it in a different manner, and then you would have that as the bunny. So really, really cute. I think that this book would be a good beginner-friendly book also. It is in British terms, so everywhere it says double crochet, you're single crocheting. But you can also see that it's single crochet. You can see in the book right there that it's single crochet. It's just like I said, the different terms. And it's one of the uh, 50 Search Press uh, 20 makes, 20 to make uh, books. They've got quite a few different books like that. They're economical. Full price, this is $11.95. Get it on sale. Borrow it from a library, borrow it from your friend, right? You have a friend that bought it, borrow it from them, right? You know, spend your money on yarn. But it's an option and there are 20 patterns in here. And you're like, not really, everybody and every eyeball is the same. Yeah, so you're paying for theirs color combinations, the way that they put it together. Um, it's very similar to like the Imkin book. You don't have as many options, but like the Imkin book, that one you're picking your different head, your different body, your different whatever. And it's a mix and match book. This is essentially the same thing, but it's not stated in the same way. But it really is because the body's the same, the eyes are the same. So got that done. And if you saw earlier in the week, um, Nina, or Nina, uh, Linan from Nina's Knots and Crochet is asking for squares again. And she's asking for the biggest, not, not big, but five by five inch squares. And I think it's like 15 to 20 per person. She does not want to be inundated with squares. She had like 5,000 last year and she's putting these together to donate for children at uh, Camp Boggy Creek in Eustis, Florida. So the goal this year is 2,025 blankets. No, she's not doing them all herself, right? Uh, they, they call it the Blanket Brigade. And you can be part of it too. Uh, just um, look up Camp Boggy Creek. You will find so many videos. And as we get ramping up into the August time period, you're going to hear more and more uh, YouTube content creators talking about it. So what Lynn did last year is for people who just wanted to be part of uh, the Boggy Brigade and didn't want to make a full blanket, didn't have the time, energy, resources, um, finances, finances to ship that to Florida because postage is, is so expensive. She's like, okay, fine. Just put one or two uh, five by five inch squares in a, in, a, in a mail or envelope and just send them to me and I'll, I'll assemble them, right? That was the whole goal. It's just a couple. That way everyone can feel like I contributed and didn't have to put in the full energy to make a blanket because uh, that's a commitment, right? And didn't have to do the whole shipment cost of a full blanket because that's a commitment, right? And that was the whole thing. So she got massively inundated. You want to know why? Because the YouTube community and the crafting yarn loving community is very generous. That is all there is to it. So what she was asking for this year is a smaller amount. And like I said, 15 to 20, you'd have to go to her site to see all the details um, per person and, and the bright ones, because these are for sick children, the bright ones, the fun, the playful, just something like that, because she's got so many of them that if she adds those bright pops of color and those fun and those flair and the, you know, all of that other stuff, they're just going to elevate all the beautiful squares that she already has and just really make it so much more kid friendly. So I started working. I sent her a bunch last year 
I didn't send her, you know, like a hundred or so. No, 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 no. I just sent her a bunch. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. So this here, look at this. Oh my gosh. It is, that is the safety yellow from Joanne Big Twist Value Yarn. This is the slime. And against that safety yellow, the slime doesn't even look bright. That's this color right there. That is slime. That is that color, right? But against the two, you're, you're like, oh, they blend, but they, I think they're perfect. And that's the sapphire color, regular black, and that's the hot pink. And then here is the back. So this is the only square I have completely finished with the Triceratops, but I am working on them. I have all the ends woven in. All of these have their center horn, their nose horn. They all, these five need to have the two more horns, which I haven't made yet, have those and they have eyeballs on it. So that'll be six of them when I get done with that. That'll be exciting. And then I got kind of curious. I'm like, well, how about a white one? So I don't have everything else on this, but I do have the, the frill part and everything and doing the white. I was looking at doing some more of the polar bears, but you know, I was already doing the, the Triceratops thing. So why not? So I did that. Um, I don't know what color the nose piece right here is, you know, you got this right here with the two that kind of blend. I don't know what color of the nose piece I should do or the horns. I'm not sure with the white one. I mean, we're having fun. It can be anything. But what do you think, right? I don't know. So, and then I've got another, what I call circle squares. Just the circle inside of the square. Um, I can turn this one into a polar bear. I can turn it into a triceratops, or I can just leave it just as it is. So working on having fun with the squares. I'm telling you, these are fun. These are a lot of fun. And I've done really well, probably why my thumb is the way that it is, of weaving everything in. I did all of those squares and then the little doggy and the little doggy was just like over the top at that point my thumb is like no you must leave me alone and let me heal and I'm like no I'm busy and crafting you'll just deal with it and well you know skin deal with it mm, you know we, we know which one um yeah it's just from the weather it's just and it's the only one it's just my thumb it's just dry that's it you would think that I would just walk around with my thumb pretty much stuck in uh, hand cream the entire time I'm not actually knitting and crocheting to finally heal it. But uh, I'm not quite that bright. Um, I, I do use the lotion. I just don't always think about it. So that's my own fault. Whatever. So those are those things. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited about this one. Oh, I just dropped the ball of yarn. Okay. it's It went rolling. It's it's okay. So this is the Scandinese, I think that's how you say it, sweater. Look at that. And it is using that Arcane Fiberworks yarn. The yellow is called Busy Bee and the gray is charcoal. I have used all of my yellow. Let's see, do I even have, I have just some like strings this big left over of that yellow, the, the Busy Bee colorway. And I've gotten it down, you can see, I am about here on my arm. Uh, let's see. I don't know. So really happy with this. Let me see if I don't mess it up. Don't come off the needles, please. Okay, because it's live needles here. Live needles. Let's see if we can get this thing on. Let's see. This one, at least I have little stoppers on. So, all right. A sweater and a sweater. All right, that'll be nice and warm. So you can see how far I've gotten. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about with my mindful makes because I want to work on this one. I am excited. I did not realize I started this thing in January and it does fit really nice, but I am, you know, obviously it's a sweater over a sweater. Uh, I started this in January. It is the end of July. It's been six months. I need to get it done. That, that's all there is to it. And I'm thrilled with this. Look, okay. So you can see, and I didn't plan that, but look at that. It just lines up perfectly. I just went down with the yellow for a whole bunch and, you know, because I just had the, uh, so much of the yellow left and so much of the, the charcoal. So I did difference on the striping than what I did here, but they both start in the same spot on the body. I think that's really cool. And now I am just going to be doing, finishing it off with the charcoal and making the full long sleeve sweater. I'm thrilled. You know, uh, I, I am just so tickled with this. Uh, 
this is the second time I've done a full yoke. And the yoke is the rounded part right here, for those that aren't familiar. A full color work, and the color work, because that's a fair aisle. Look at that, you can see all the, the striping and everything of the yarn that wasn't used. So I'm using two colors at once throughout here. And it's the second sweater I have ever done with this type of construction. So 100% thrilled. Um, I'm getting better at my garment making, right? Because we're all learning. It doesn't matter. You can always look at somebody else and go, wow, that's great. I could never. Uh -huh. You can though. You you really can. Um, knitting is knit and pearl and that's it. And by the way, on this sweater, the only pearl that I did was a little bit up here, right? Because that was ribbing right here in this, this top part. Uh, everything else has been knit. There's been no purling. It's just knit. That's it. So if it's one of those, you know, you're, you're like, I, I can knit, but I can only knit and I can't really purl. There's only a very few rows of purl right there. Yeah, that's it. And then on the, on the, um, bottom, right, right here, I've got pearl down here because I'm doing ribbing. Right. But, um, the majority of the sweater, is knit. Now this is a Technique Fair Out, so I was using two colors at once and I would knit with the color that I wanted to show through and that was that black design that you can see. It's charcoal but you know whatever. Uh, totally thrilled. This is just firing my brain right now. This is what I want to work on. This is why I didn't want to work on the puppy dog. It's really cute. My granddaughter's going to love it. Like I said she hasn't seen it yet. Um, she's in the other room. She's going to love it. I'm happy I got it done, but I didn't want to work on that. I wanted to work on this. I wanted to work on my squares. I, you know, it's, I know it's weird, right? You're knitting and crocheting. What's the difference, a woman? I, I don't know. But especially when I realized that this hadn't been done in six months, that's crazy. And it needs to get done. It's, and it's so close now. If I wanted to do and just leave it at three quarter length sleeves, I could. Um, I could just put some, I mean, you know, I could put ribbing on the end right there and leave it like that. But I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go to the wrists. So it, it is a bit longer, right? I do have more to go, uh, but I think it'll be worth it um, to, to do that. I'm like, wow, I, this, this to me looks more like a professional sweater. I feel like a big girl. I feel like a big girl knitter, right? Like, oh, I did it. I did it. It's fancy. <laughs> You know, I'm stepping up my game. I'm impressing myself. So there you have it. I thought that was kind of funny. I'm like, all right, we got that going on. And then um, I do have two other sweaters. I'm sure you've seen those. Uh, one of them is called Flourish. It's not right here. I thought I had everything sitting around me. I don't. And then, of course, I have my husband's sweater, uh, which I'm working on with... Uh, this yarn, the Malabrigo um, Pecus. I don't know how you say that. I mean, I, I have no idea, but that color, no clue. And I'm working on it with this. So I do have those two. They're not sitting right here. Uh, I'll, I'll show them later. You'll get a chance to see them. So yeah, I did get a lot of stuff worked on. And I think the thing that I'm happiest with is this. It's not done yet, but it hibernate. How long did it hibernate for? How long was it sitting here sleeveless, right? That was it. That's all I had. It, these are just holders. This yelp, this pink thread, that's just holders. I'll, I'll pull all that out and weave in all the ends. But how long did I have it where I had the top done, I had the full thing in the body done, and it was just a matter of dealing with the sleeves. I put it in a bag probably for months. I mean, literally for months, you know, and that's all I had to do is the sleeves. That's it. That's, that's really, and this right here that you're seeing, that's just thread. That's that pink thread that I use. Those are places where I did my decreases. So those are my markers. So that, those will be moved out of there too. So that's, that's not going to stay that, that weird looking stuff. But, you know, I mean, this is stunning. Why, why didn't I finish this? I'm gonna be so thrilled wearing this one to work, you know, when it gets cooler. Oh yeah. You know, I'll be strutting. Put it with some black pants or something like that, high heels. I don't know. I could do it. Um, I don't what jewelry should I wear? You know I wear a lot of grandma jewelry, right? You know, big gaudy jewelry. <laughs> you love it. Um, I don't know if I should wear jewelry with this. I think it would take away from the pattern. I mean, I have a lanyard with my badge and all that stuff 
stuff, right? But as far as like an actual necklace, I, I don't know. I think this is just, I think it's just going to talk for itself. The yarn speaks for itself. It is gorgeous, hand-dyed, stunning yarn. And the pattern is just amazing. And I have two more sweater quantities of Arcane Fiberworks fingering weight yarn that I could make other sweaters with if I choose to. Not to count all the other yarns that I have that I could definitely do sweaters with. So I'm gonna look through my stuff and uh, Maybe I should hold off. Maybe I should finish this one and work on a couple of my other ones since I do have another sweater for myself in the works and then a sweater for my husband. And I want to get the sweater for my granddaughter worked on that I have not touched. It's over there. I can't reach it. It's fine. I want to get that one worked on too. But uh, yeah, new life, new life, just excitement. This is just total, total excitement. And where did the little puppy go? And I am really happy that I got this done. I didn't want to. <laughs> oh my gosh, I so didn't want to. <laughs> this, this was this was like punishment assembly. <laughs> and it is the cutest little thing. Look at that. It is absolutely stunning. But for the life of me, I just I didn't want to. And if my granddaughter had not asked me specifically about it how to put it off for another week two weeks maybe a month I don't know you know um that's how amigurumi are if if I don't just muscle through it and get it done mm, sometimes they just languish as pieces and parts and it'd just be a body just like that forever <laughs> so so I was shamed <laughs> Ashamed to get it done. Nana, where's that thing? Remember the one that we picked out and everything that you were going to do? Yeah, that one. That's the one. So really thrilled with that. Um, but having a blast, right? Just totally 100% having a blast with the things that I'm working on. And some more than others. Okay, not going to lie. Some more than others. And trying to take time to work on the ones that I want to work on a little bit more, right? Uh, yeah, we'll see how that works. <laughs> With that, everybody, you guys have a great day, night, evening, whatever it happens to be, and I will talk to you again later. Bye-bye.